So as of recent, Hasbro's Transformers have been yellowing and that's a huge issue. Toys will yellow, well if anything will, that's just how something decays quote unquote over time. But the recent cases are toys that have only been out for three, two years, even toys coming out that like this year are yellowed. It's a huge issue. But there are a few misconceptions about this problem that I see a lot. So I did a bunch of Googling to try and understand why this is happening, isolating the cases and trying to figure out what was wrong with the Hasbro toys. This is not a video of me defending a bad product issue, nor is it a video of me putting down a company because they made a mistake. This is a video presenting the facts that I found, putting certain questions and concerns at ease or raising things we should know about. So I do see a lot of, oh, Hasbro sucks, or oh, Hasbro doesn't care, their toys are yellowing. And I'll also see things like, what about Star Saber and stuff? Hopefully some things I'll present here will probably put a lot of those at ease. So no, it's not a case of Hasbro not caring. They do. I mean, if they didn't care, then their brand reputation would go down the toilet and they'd lose money, lots of it. They have stated they discovered the problem and have a solution, but then Motormaster happened. So how does something like that, you know, happen? How does that miss? Well, during the round table that they had with creators, certain creators, a couple of months ago, they talked about how they discovered the issue and I believe somewhere it was mentioned that it was the plastic supplier. Well, if the plastic supplier was the issue, that means they have to change it, which means multiple meetings by sales teams to try and find the right plastic to fit their needs, perhaps some testing involved, that takes weeks to complete. Then there's the issue of contracts. If they have a pre-existing contract with the company that has the yellowing material, they'll have to follow through with it. Breaking those contracts usually means a buyout, unless there's a specific clause to state that yellowing or decaying of plastic breaks the contract. Because if that doesn't, if that's not there, then Hasbro has to pay the other company a large sum for whatever their contract says to break it. Then after all that, they have to establish a new contract with the new supplier, which takes multiple sales and CO meetings to complete, then shipping the plastic to the factory, replacing and disposing of the old stuff or RMAing it to the original company, then putting the new materials in. Basically what I'm saying is this stuff takes forever to complete. Hasbro stated this at that round table that they knew of the issue and our pictures did help, but the key part of what they were showing the creators then was wave two of Legacy in depth, meaning that they'd already started production most likely before the plastic was changed. There's no definitive way of telling this without Hasbro coming out and telling us themselves, which I really, really wish they did, but this is just me speculating based on the information that's available to us. Motormaster has been yellowing in like three to four specific places, so that may have something to do with the material on those parts, but that brings me to what causes yellowing. Yellowing isn't just a sunlight thing. I know a lot of people think it's just sunlight and that's it. It can also be attributed to heat, skin oils, fluorescent lights, rapid change in temperatures. Motormaster has only officially released in Australia at the time of recording this. So it could very much be a heat thing, even though they're in like their winter-ish time. I used to live in Australia and I know how hot it can be at this time of the year, even though it's usually the cooler part of the year. Another big issue I've noticed with the yellowing, with toys coming out, like just out of the box, yellow, is fluorescent light. Now, most of the lights in my house are LEDs. They're the LED light bulbs that we put in the house because fluorescent, they're more efficient than fluorescent lights. And fluorescent are more efficient than incandescent lights and all that, you know. We, we wanted to go for more power efficient light bulbs in the house, so we went with LEDs. Stores use fluorescent tubes a lot of times. And in the case of my Shattered Glass Starscream, he was sitting on the top shelf, window facing forward in a GameStop using fluorescent light tubes. And there is a light tube right above the Transformers shelf. That could have sped up the process of the yellowing because mine was yellowed out of the box. That is a huge factor. My lights I used to shoot, the soft boxes I used to shoot these videos, they use fluorescent bulbs and I have them on all the time. That could be a, a factor as to why he was yellowing on the shelf too. That doesn't explain Motormaster unless they use fluorescent lights in the factory or the packing facility and it just like that's what set it off. But that could also be another issue. Two of my friends who have this toy from Australia have had theirs yellow out of the box in relatively the same spots. And it's normally on the one side too. So I don't know if that has something to do with where they're positioned in the factory while they're being made because where they're being made is also a warmer climate than normal. So 
you know, these all these factors play in. I'm not saying that that's a cause and we should ignore it. I'm saying that that might be the issue. It's still a problem. Shattered glass star scream is another big problem. And the decay seems to start at the joint parts, which are made of a different material. They are stronger, the material that they use for the joints. Same with RC from Cyberverse and her parts. Those are the ones that just yellow first. I actually did an experiment where I put my shattered glass star scream in front of a window for 24 hours and it didn't change at all. And then I left it on my shelf for two weeks and it got a lot more yellow in the heat of my room versus in front of the window. So I don't know if it's more of a heat thing or a sunlight thing in these cases but it, I, it, I'm leaning more towards heat. Now onto Star Saber. What is happening with that? Well, you would hope a HasLab toy where they're only making 27,000 of them wouldn't have issue. And I sure as hell hope it doesn't because if it does, we will have problems. Like I will be very upset if that thing has problems. All we have for progress on this toy is an engineering sample or an EP1 sample of the toy shown off by Evan, which Evan, if you, ever do like in the small one percent chance you actually end up seeing this video that showcase that you made was amazing and i loved it i loved as a marketing person it made me very happy and my friends too we watched that together and we love the showcase thank you for making that and i really hope you do that for more figures but there hasn't been an email stating that star saber has started production meaning he has a very 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 high likelihood of being made of the new plastic that won't yellow so I'm not too, too worried about it, but I am still slightly worried because if he does yellow on more than like two copies, then we're going to have issues. Hasbro did provide replacement pieces for Unicron when people broke the wings or something. So maybe if people have an issue with Star Saber, Hasbro can provide replacement parts like they did Unicron, and then that'll somewhat make up for certain problems. Hasbro isn't the only company to have this issue. Knockoff and third party companies always have yellowing problems. Lego has had it like no company is perfect. Samsung had phones that caught fire. Apple had phones that bent. Car companies have had many, many recalls. Like big companies always have some issue and it just slips through the cracks because of how large they are. Hasbro isn't perfect. And I'm not trying to defend this because the yellowing is bad and they should have caught this earlier or the plastic supplier should have notified them if it was like a change in recipe or something, if that was the case. But there are some things we need to understand behind the scenes with these things that makes changing these issues slow. It could also very much be a skin oil thing. When you get hot or when you get warm or under stress, you sweat. When you sweat, you excrete like, you know, liquid, skin oils, you get clammy hands or whatever. And if you're hot when you're packing the toys up, assembling them, or if you're just opening it up for the first time and you're messing with it and your skin oils react chemically to the plastic, that can also cause discoloring. It's strange with Motormaster because it's only a couple of parts specifically that are yellowing and in specific places on those parts. So I'm not sure if skin oils is going to be the actual cause of that because your same hand you're touching the elbow joint with would also be touching the foot, but it's not discoloring the foot. It's, it's very weird. Those are just examples, but it's very strange. I do hope Hasbro better communicates this with us because their communication on other things has been so good these past like few months after like the designers created Instagram accounts and started posting on them more and more. So please, please have fixed this before Star Saber releases. You don't want a Bionicle lime green and brittle plastic problem where the plastic gets so brittle people stop buying the toys and then your line starts to die. You don't want that. I really do hope the rest of the wave is fine because Motormaster and Blitzwing were the first toys to ship out, but we won't know till they release. Motormaster does come out on July 5th, according to Amazon, here in Canada. So I'll be able to tell exactly what happens on July 6th when it arrives. So we'll see. But I hope this helps shed some light on some of the things that cause yellowing and my thoughts on how I think the issues are going behind the scenes. Like as someone who studied business in school and knows about supply chain and marketing and all this stuff, I know how long it takes to change one small aspect of your manufacturing. It takes ages to do that. And if it was changed just before that round table, but after wave two's production, then wave two will still be made with the old materials and wave three, Star Saber, the studio series toys coming out next year, hopefully will be made with the new stuff. Let's hope, fingers crossed. But that was just a quick little video to bring a couple of things to your attention to maybe shed some light on some things, ease some um, some worries people have about Star Saber because you know, if they're only making a certain amount and then never touching it again and he's expensive, you better hope that he works properly. <laughs>
But thank you very much for watching. Um, I will see you next time. Goodbye. I will leave all of the uh, articles and reference links I use in the description as well if you want to read them more in depth on how certain materials decay over time. They're very interesting, so you can give them a read if you want to. None of them are sponsoring this video. You can just give them a read if you want. I am going to go and have... Ooh, what do I want for lunch? I want to have samosas for lunch. All right, bye-bye.